like that's taken care of, something to that effect, and something else. I mean, I don't know. All I heard was that's taken care of. We heard from a convicted killer today in the Eric Boyd trial. Boyd faces dozens of charges in connection to the 2007 murders of Shannon Christian and Chris Newsom. So here to break down some key pieces of the trial is Defense Attorney Don Bosch. Don, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now today, the jury heard from another convicted killer in this case. He heard from George Thomas, and he described the murders and said Boyd was involved. Let's take a listen to that piece of testimony. Who was with Mr. Newsom? Mr. Boyd. What can you tell us about Mr. Newsom? How did he get born? He was blindfolded and uh, bound as well. How was he bound? Uh, about a, about a wrist with uh, some cloth or, I mean, it was like strings that was tying them. Once again, George Thomas testifying. Uh, Don, let's talk about something that we've heard consistently today, that a lot of his testimony, there were inconsistencies. Just how much does his testimony matter, especially given the inconsistencies? Well, first of all, his testimony matters greatly to whether or not the state will be successful in convicting Eric Boyd. This is essentially the only new evidence they have from when these murders occurred over 12 years ago. And so it will really be up to a jury to decide whether or not that George Thomas was credible. Credibility is based on the perception of truth and the way you show that somebody is not being truthful is to exploit those inconsistencies. And if Clint Frazier, the defense lawyer, uh, has spotted those that many of us have spotted today, uh, he should have uh, uh, quite the day tomorrow uh, discrediting the testimony of Thomas. Some of those inconsistencies, let's talk about those. Well, what I thought was remarkable was the distance that Thomas kept putting between himself and the actual murders. No question he was around, no question he participated at some level in the carjacking and the kidnap based on his testimony today, but he, every chance he got, he put distance between himself and the deaths of these two young people. And, and I think it was so great that, that it's really going to discredit him eventually. And if I were a juror, I'd be very skeptical to base a verdict largely on this man's testimony. Don, earlier uh, the jury saw a lot of evidence that uh, KPD forensics had put out mm -hmm. and at the crime scene. Now, take a listen to part of that testimony from earlier today. This is the white cloth. It was from a purse in a garbage bag on the back porch. And it appeared to have some blood on it. So what was the purpose of going through piece by piece by piece, every bit of evidence, some of that evidence not even linked to Boyd? Well, I think you want to show the overall scope of the conspiracy and all the people that were involved. And really what you want to show is this was a very small house, a very small crime scene. And if the jurors were to believe that Boyd was there, then they're going to have a hard time believing that or not believing that he didn't have something to do with it. And remember, under a conspiracy theory, all you have to do is just a very little bit to be part of that conspiracy and ultimately responsible for murder. So you do, as a state, want to put these kinds of things in to show the breadth and scope of what, where everything was uh, in such a small area. And I think the state is doing a pretty good job of that right now. I want to go back to talking about Thomas on the stand. Of course, uh, the defense is pushing back, saying that uh, he made a devil's bargain. The prosecution made a devil's bargain with Thomas. Talk more about that. Well, they do, and the government and the state do every time that they take a co-conspirator and give them an offer. I often say that as a defense lawyer, if I offered a witness money, which would be the only thing of value that I could offer purportedly, testify, I would go to jail. The government has something better than money. They have liberty. And they have made that deal with Thomas. They have taken a sentence that was going to be in excess of 125 years of actual service down to 31 more years from today, and he will be released in return for what they believe is his truthful and accurate testimony to convict Boyd. It is a devil's bargain. I can tell you, though, that I would be shocked if the families did not consent to this before the state agreed to do this. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, the defense gets their opportunity to talk to George Thomas. Thank you so much, Don Bosch, always being here to break Thank it you. down for us back tomorrow as well. Now you can watch live updates throughout the trial on the new WBIR app. We're also live streaming the testimony on the app, WBIR.com and 
the WBIR YouTube page. And you can also follow along on Twitter with the hashtag Boyd Trial.